Hello! Happy quarantine everyone! Have everyone's doing well, being safe. This is Miss Stevens from Lakewood Middle School and I have a math problem to present to you because my husband and I are replacing our back fence. It is so freeing to not have any back fence back here. dug them up already look at that miss steven's got two of them on her own got any help look at that those concrete posts were inside those holes over there and in fact they saw i showed you right here is what the fence is about gonna look like and i have a i have a math problem for you so I'll, I'll show you more in detail of what it specifically looks like uh, it's a very good problem that we have. Here is the blueprints that we drew up for it. There we go, much better. So that two by four means that there's gonna be a two by four piece of wood on top. Those four by fours are the traditional posts that you will see in a fence. Two by two is what the frame is gonna be. So if you can kind of see that, there's gonna be a two by four on top, a two by four on the bottom, and then two by twos is gonna be what frames my hog wire. Down here, it's just me pricing out. Always price out before you buy something. But here, if you were to take a cross section, that's a geometry vocab word for you, a cross section. If I were just gonna slice that up and I were to see in the middle there, this is what the middle would look like. So two by four on top, two by four on the bottom. We decided that this part right here needs some protection against uh, our dog escaping or baby escaping. So we're gonna put a two by six to kind of protect our fence a little bit so two by four on top two by four on the bottom two by two to frame it out and the hog wires in between now here's where the math problem comes in so here's our shop we got a lot of two by fours I don't know if you can see but behind those two by fours are two by twos I had a hog wire panel right here and sailor the shop dog is helping us out here so looking here, this is what's going to frame it. Notice I have kind of a groove in here and I'm going to kind of place that groove in with here. And it's gonna frame the whole thing. Then I got my two by fours. Notice my two by fours are considerably bigger than my hog wire. And the reason why is because this hog wire is eight feet, eight feet long. Now we don't wanna cut this hog wire because if we cut it, all of this black stuff, it's paint. And if it gets cut, then that means it's exposed to the to the weather there. And that means it, it can rust and we don't want rust. So we wanna keep it as solid as we can. And we could go and buy paint and protect it and cut it, but we're on lockdown here. We can't really go get materials. So we got two by fours that are considerably longer than my hog wire because they have to go not only to the distance of the hog wire, which is eight feet, a traditional two by four is two by four by eight, but we also, have to incorporate that frame. We have to incorporate that frame that's gonna be around. Now here is my question, and I'll have more details in a printout here, but where do I cut my two by four? And where do I cut my two by twos to frame it? Cause I have this, it's called a dado, this groove dado. Uh, the reason why it's called a dado is because we get a blade to cut in there. That blade itself is called a dado blade. But this groove right here snucks in here. The distance, the depth of that cut is only half an inch. So when I go in here, I'm going to go half an inch in deep. I have some excess. Now something you might not know about two by twos and two by fours is something I learned on this project. Two by fours and two by twos, they are not actually two inches by two inches, as you would, might think. They are actually one and a half inches by one and a half inches. Same with the two by two, it's not, or two by four, I should say. It's not two inches by four inches. It's three and a half inches by one and a half inches. So that's the big question that I have. I'm gonna give more details in my sketch work, but 
Maybe it's something for you to think about while you're stuck at home. So we'll present the problem. I'll give you an answer key on Friday if you figure it out. Now, everybody has the capability of figuring out this problem. Maybe not today, but you might be able to figure out in three days from now, when you're working on it, your parents could figure out. The funky thing about this problem is we're really dealing with metric versus not metric measurements. Metric measurements, easy peasy, Base 10, I got 10 fingers on my hand. I know what half of 10 is in my head. I'm used to it. All those things, it's great. And that's what the metric system is. If I think about centimeters and meters and whatnot, there's 10 units to get to each upgrade unit. Like inches would upgrade to feet, right? There's 10 inches and a foot if it was metric. Now, feet isn't metric, it's standard. Something that's kind of funky about standard is that it's base 12, which is really, really cool when you're dealing with dividing things up. Because if I have something that's base 10 and I want to divide it into four parts, 10 divided by four kind of gets a weird decimal, a weird fraction. But when you're cutting things, you don't necessarily need to be like that precise. But if you're working at base 12, cutting it into four different parts, now that's a number, that's three inches. So we're dealing with metric versus not metric. We're dealing with how do we convert eight feet into inches and all that great stuff. So I want to know how long does each of these two by two sections need to be in order to frame it? And how long does each of these two by four sections need to be in order for me to put a top rail and a bottom rail? All right. Like I said, Friday, you'll see an answer key. So think about this problem a little bit.